All right, I believe that is everything we need to weld on this gas tank. Just two mounts on the back. That should be good enough. Now, we still need to do a pressure test on this to make sure that none of my welds are leaking. So I found this. I can't remember what I made this for, but it has the same bolt pattern as the uh, mount for the fuel pump for this gas tank. So that's awesome. So we can put this on as a spot where we can put a hose on here and pressurize this thing. And just spray soapy water in this and just make sure nothing's leaking. So because this gas tank is vented, it's probably not gonna see too much pressure. So I'm only gonna test it at like 25 or 30 PSI. It's mainly just a test of making sure that nothing is, no welds are leaking or anything. You guys are right, I probably should you know, put some water, put, fill this thing full of water so I'm not pressurizing air. But it's, eh, just don't get too close to it, I guess. All right, so only one leak. Right here, it's just a little puddle that's too big that I didn't add enough filler metal to. So let me weld that and uh, didn't see any leaks any, anywhere else. So once I fix that, then we can put this thing back on the frame. Fixed. So the bottom is able to move a tiny little bit this way, but the top feels uh, the top feels nice and solid in here. So yeah, gas tank is now finished and in the frame. All right, gas tank is now finally finished. We got it all welded together, pressure tested, and installed in the frame. Now let's talk about the sway bar and secondary sway bar next. So, something tells me that this vehicle is really going to need some sway bars. I know I know most trophy trucks don't have sway bars, I don't think. At least they don't look like they have sway bars because they're on three wheels going around a corner on a race. But uh, with what we're wanting to do with this vehicle, I think it needs some type of sway bar now. And we can always, just, we can always take it off if, if we don't want. Now, I was originally planning on just buying another rear sway bar off of like a Polaris Razor 1000, basically the same thing I did for the CBR 1000 project I wanted to do with this. But I found this at the scrapyard and I paid a dollar for this thing. So let's use this. It seems to be like perfect size. Now, the reason I thought uh, we needed to install this before disassembling the frame is I was originally gonna try and put this in the frame, like above the trailing arms, but there's really no good spot to mount it to the frame and it's gonna be in the way of a couple things. So it's not really that great of a spot to put it in the frame, but it seems to almost fit perfectly underneath the frame, basically the same spot that I have it on the CBR 1000 project, it'll fit underneath the frame like that. We can mount it on these bars right here and just connect it to the trailing arms. Now the downside to that is, now it's gonna be vulnerable to hitting rocks, bottoming out on the ground and bending or breaking this thing, but it's the same same spot I have it on the CBR 1000 project, and I've never broken that thing yet, and I've been bottoming that thing out for years and years, so I think it'll be fine. I think it'll just be fine putting it on the bottom, and actually because we're putting it on the bottom, uh, we can actually do it. It'll actually be easier to do it after the frame's all disassembled. We can flip the frame over and then mount this thing. I just need to mark where exactly on the frame I want it mounted. So, And actually the same thing with the secondary sway bar that I want to put uh, more in the rear of the frame. 
We can actually install that one after the frame's all disassembled and welded together. So as far as the sway bars on this, let's just let's do them after. So, now that we're waiting on the sway bars till after the frame's all disassembled, we now have only one thing on this list left. We need to finish the cross bracing. All right, so we really want to make sure to protect the oil pan, so I uh, cut these out. And I can't wear my hood under here, so I'm just gonna have to close my eyes and tack it in place. Ah, oh, let's... Oh, oh this is challenging. Definitely not the best tax ever, but for not being able to see, not that bad. So, yeah, this should be able to protect, protect the oil pan a lot better because it does kind of it's kind of level with the frame with the bottom of the frame. And if I I felt like if I just put a sheet of aluminum on the bottom of this, uh, any rock still gonna be able to transfer through the thin aluminum and go into this. This allows me to put a bigger piece of a plate on here and it's a little bit further down. And I'm gonna have to make it easily removable so therefore we can still change oil and everything. So I've been staring at this for a couple hours now trying to figure out how do I add tubing to this giant gaping hole right in the center of the frame on the roof. I was originally thinking of just adding a, a giant cross bracing, just a giant X right in the middle, but it's like, that's boring, it's, there's already too many X's on this thing, I want to do something different, something a little bit cooler than that, and this is the closest thing I can come up with, that's something that's different, that doesn't have, that it doesn't use too much tubing, and uh, also makes it strong and structurally sound and everything, so, also here's another question, because this tubing right here, has a roll to it, it's not a bend, it's a roll, it's got a curve to it, and I, am I doing the same, to this tubing and possibly this tubing on this side or I had another idea where this tubing and this tubing meets up maybe I can have a bend, like a 10 degree bend so and I want to kind of want to have this a little bit higher than this so therefore this bends down to it and this bends down I think that would look kind of so I don't know I was staring at this for cup probably way too long and I've been trying to figure out like what's the coolest way to do this what's the, what would look cool uh, and what would be structurally sound and structurally strong and everything. I think that this is the closest thing I can come up with that kind of looks interesting and not boring. So I think I just need to commit to it and start cutting tubing and tacking it in place.
I'm glad what I'm glad I went with the bend right here instead of uh instead of curving it like this is. I think uh I think that looks pretty cool. What do you think? So when I stand back and look at that, I, I, I don't know, that just, it looks weird for some reason. Uh, I don't know, that looks, that looks slightly better. Uh, I guess let's, let's just go with that. So I'm gonna use one inch tubing, because I don't wanna use inch and a quarter, because, I don't know, my thought process is the smaller the tubing, the less you're gonna see it as you're looking out. So let's use one inch tubing for that. How does that look? All right, I think the last tubing that this frame needs is just cross bracing, connecting these shock towers, they're almost like shock towers, down to this right here. I'm probably gonna use one inch tubing for this, we don't need to use inch and a quarter. So just tubing going from here, down to here, and then up here, down to there, and to strengthen things even further, more cross bracing going from here, up to here, and then from here, up to here to strengthen this between this and this. So I know it's a lot of cross bracing, it's a lot of tubing, but I want this frame bulletproof. The frame is now technically pretty much uh, finished as far as all the tubing that I want to add is installed, all the cross bracings installed. Now, I was considering for a little bit, uh, like, how do I, how do I add tubing? I wanted to add tubing to like, you know, in here, some type of cross bracing or possibly even going from here to the middle, then here to the middle of this and just, just add something back here, just, you know, because this is a giant open space. But then I was looking at it and it's like, it really doesn't need it. It's, you know, it's not gonna add any structural aspect to the frame. So I think it's fine, just leave it open. I don't wanna add tubing just to add tubing. So I think let's just, it's fine, let's, let's just leave it, so. Now, the frame is finally at the point where we can, in the next video, uh, fully disassemble this thing, weld it all together, and then as we're reassembling it, we got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, we have to lengthen this, the, uh, the CV axles, connect those together, we need to add chain guides to the center chain going up to the front spool. We need to add floor pans, pedals. We need we really need to uh, we really need to do a compression test on this engine. I'm hoping this thing wasn't cheap for a reason. I bought this for $3,000 on eBay, 
Well, while all other Hayabusa engines I saw on eBay were like five, six, seven thousand dollars for just the engine, where this was three thousand dollars for the engine, the airbox, the throttle bodies, the wiring, pretty much almost everything I need to get it running uh, for three thousand dollars. So I'm hoping it wasn't cheap for a reason. So we need to do a compression test on this in the next video to figure out like does this thing need a rebuild? Because if it does, I'd rather do it now versus after we, you know, try to wire it up and get it running and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Hopefully I don't have to rebuild this thing, but I'm fairly confident we may not need to. But uh, if we do add a turbo, and I am considering adding a turbo to this project, because I know that was kind of a uh, big question of like, am I doing a turbo? What I'm going to do for, you know, for this project is I want to get this thing running. I want to tune all the components on this first before adding a turbo, and then once we get everything working, once the, we know the, this engine's good, then we're poss possibly going to add a turbo to, to this project. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's going to be fun. So, anyway, guess that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.